I want to get the Platinum trophies for the entire GTA series. In the last video I got my first ever GTA Platinum in Vice City and now the journey continues in San Andreas. Just like in Vice City, the main trophy I'll be working towards is for getting 100% completion. Doing this, I'll unlock most of the trophies in the game apart from a few miscellaneous ones, and I'll also be focusing on getting these three missable trophies as well, so that I don't need to play the game a second time. The main character, Carl Johnson, also known as CJ, returns home from Liberty City where he's lived for the past five years after he hears about his mother being murdered. As he touches down, he's quickly picked up by Crash, who then threatened to frame him for the murder of a police officer in order to make CJ do whatever they want. Well, what do we got here? This is a weapon, Officer Pulaski, that was used to gun down a police officer not 10 minutes ago. After this conversation, they throw him into Baller's territory, which is an opposing gang of Grove Street, and now the game begins. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. In the first mission, you have to visit the cemetery, and after some cutscenes introducing a lot of the characters and a quick escape from a baller car, I unlock the first trophy. Soon after that, the gang decided to slide on the ballers, and after doing a few drive-bys, we get our first wanted level and have to remove it by driving into a paint spray for another trophy. Then I went and did the paramedic missions because you have to drive around the map a lot in these games, and doing this allows me to learn the layout early on. After completing level 12, I got the savior trophy, and I also unlocked infinite sprint as well. The paramedic missions gave me a nice bit of starting cash, and I came across a house that I could purchase, so I bought it, and I unlocked the American Dream trophy. Now it was time to unlock the first of three missable trophies. A friend of CJ's was recently released from jail and he wants to become a rapper, but he's absolutely terrible. Hey yo, when I come through up in the place, you don't want me to come with a gun in your face. I spit it hotter than anybody in the yeah, world could do. That it's shit like I sucks. Damn. Because of this, he wants you to go and steal a rhyme book from a well-known rapper, Mad Dog. This mission introduces stealth, and to get the trophy you need to stealth kill every enemy inside the mansion. This was pretty difficult for me at first because I had to learn the timing, but once I figured it out I was good to go. After I stole the rhymes I picked up a silenced pistol which made the stealth kill so much easier, and once I left the mansion I unlocked the assassin trophy. After this I was driving around the map and I came across a fire engine. I didn't know how rare these would be so I decided to do the firefighter mission straight away and these were pretty similar to the Vice City ones but a lot less annoying. After completing level 12 I got the trophy and now I don't take damage from fire which would come in handy later on. There's a mechanic in this game where if you don't eat you start to starve and if you starve for too long you'll die, just like in real life. So as I was playing the game I had to eat food and after eating 8 meals from a clucking bell I unlocked the with extra dip trophy. After a few hours I got to a mission called the Green Saber and this will be a major turning point in the game. Sweet, Carl's brother wants to roll on some ballers downtown. When CJ is about to get in the car, he gets a call from Caesar telling him there's something he needs to see urgently. When CJ arrives he sees two ballers coming out of a building, followed by Ryder and Big Smoke. Tenpenny is also there as well. This is the start of Ryder and Big Smoke's betrayal. CJ quickly realises that his brother is running into a trap and races to go and get him. When he arrives he finds that he's been shot. CJ then proceeds to kill everyone that shows up until the cops arrive and he's forced to surrender. At this point I unlocked the all dressed up for San Fierro trophy and a new section of the map as well. Sweet manages to survive and is in a prison infirmary and CJ gets taken to the middle of nowhere by Crash who lets CJ know what will happen to Sweet if he doesn't cooperate. In San Fierro there's a driving school which you have to complete for story progression and you also need to complete all four driving schools with at least a bronze medal for progress towards the 100% as well. After completing the driving school I got the schools out trophy. As I was playing the game I was doing a lot of the tasks for the 100% completion to lower the amount of time I need to spend grinding it out at the end. So I decided to do some of the races in San Fierro and I managed to fall off the track somehow and into the water. For some reason I decided not to get out of the car and I eventually fell through the map and drowned for another trophy. Now it's time to get the second missable trophy. I've been doing missions in San Fierro for a few hours at this point and I got to a mission where I needed to rescue a man called Mike Torino from the back of a van. And to get the trophy I had to find him without using any of the directions given to CJ and to do this I just had to drive straight to the airport and when I got there the trophy unlocked. This mission introduces Mike Torino who's a government agent and a major part of the story development for the game. It was now time to confront and kill three major characters, Jizzy and T-Bone who we were doing missions for to find out about the Loco Syndicate and Ryder for his betrayal. Soon after I was given a mission by Woozy, the leader of the triads, to blow up a crack factory. I had to take a car wired with a bomb into the factory and escape and after the factory was destroyed and I escaped the compound I got the What Happens in Las Venturas trophy. 
After this it was a whole day and 18 hours before I got the next trophy. This is because the game is massive and there was a bunch of stuff that needed to be done in between a lot of the trophies. I did about 20 missions and I also made a lot of progress towards the 100% as well. There was one mission in particular though that stood out above the rest. CJ was waiting for the crash team to show up and collect a dossier. Then Officer Tenpenny knocks out Officer Hernandez with a shovel, accusing him of snitching to internal affairs. No! You snitch piece of shit! You vital asshole! You sold us out! Carl is then forced to dig a grave for himself and Hernandez, but Hernandez wakes up and tries to rush Pulaski, who then shoots him. After this, Pulaski attempts to escape, but eventually gets caught by CJ, who puts an end to him while some glitches happen in the background. This was really satisfying because Pulaski was an incredibly aggressive officer, even more so than Tenpenny, and he just acted like a complete dick in every single cutscene. After this, it was time to get the final missable trophy. I was given a mission by the truth to break into the underground army base to recover something called the Black Project. To get the trophy, I needed to sneak into the base without setting off the alarm above ground. To achieve this, I stayed close to the fence and ignored the people in the towers, because if you aim at them, even if they aren't facing you, they magically know you're there and either kill you or set off the alarm. As I was sneaking, I was headshotting any of the guards in my way with my silenced pistol, and eventually I made it into the underground base. Once I escaped, I unlocked the trophy. After I'd finished that mission, I went to make dinner in real life and I forgot to turn off the game. When I came back, I noticed that the Today Was A Good Day trophy had unlocked, and you get this for going 24 hours in game without breaking the law, being wanted, and killing or harming anyone. Which is quite funny because I was practically at the end of the game and I hadn't achieved this yet. Earlier on I was doing missions for a man called Salvatore Leone and eventually he gave me a mission which involved me flying back to Liberty City and taking out Marco Ferrelli for the Liberty City State of Mind trophy. This was the only time I got to see Liberty City in this game and it was very brief. After finishing the rest of the missions in the game apart from the final one, it was time to take over a good chunk of turf in Los Santos in order to be able to start the final mission. So I decided while I'm doing that I might as well take over all the turf in one go and this turned out to be the worst grind in the entire game for me. There are over 50 gang turfs in the game to take over and to start a takeover you need to be standing in the turf that you want to take and kill three opposing gang members while on foot. Doing this will start a gang war which is basically three waves of enemies that you need to survive against with each wave being more difficult than the last one. Here's where the problem lies. RNG. It's completely random as to how many gang members will actually spawn. Sometimes they never spawn so I'd be circling the block trying to get them to spawn in and if that doesn't work I'd leave the area completely and try again later. Eventually I took over enough turf to gain maximum respect and unlock the original gangster trophy. A few hours later I came to this tiny piece of land to take over and this was by far the worst one. Because I'd taken the turf surrounding this one first, there were no enemies spawning for hours and I mean hours. I had no save close enough to go back to so I was stuck here praying to the RNG gods to smile upon me. Eventually they did and I was so glad to be done with it. After this I went to go and save the game until... the game crashed. I had lost about 5 hours of turf takeovers because I stupidly didn't save after each one. It's obviously my own fault but this hurt so much man. I genuinely wanted to quit the game because of it and I almost did. I took a break and decided that I had to get this done. People voted for it and seemed excited for the video and I really want to platinum this series as well so I pushed on. After the last trophy almost an entire day passed before I got the next one. I eventually owned all the gang turfs so once I finished I went and bought the rest of the properties in the game and I got another trophy for owning all gang turfs, properties and having a million dollars cash and I was so happy this was done. It's now time to finish the final mission and complete the game. By now Sweet had been released from jail after I completed all the missions for the government agent. CJ and Sweet manage to find out where Big Smoke is hiding out and CJ goes alone to take him out. After climbing four floors and fighting off several enemies he confronts Big Smoke who says he doesn't regret betraying the Grove Street families. After the cutscene I had to do a boss fight against Big Smoke who has on body armour and an infinite amount of goons that help him out. Eventually CJ takes him out and before dying he explains that he had no choice and saw an opportunity for money, power and that everyone would remember Big Smoke. Straight after this Tenpenny points a shotgun at CJ who has to shout Sweet's name to distract him. After shooting CJ but missing Tenpenny attempts to escape and this is where the fire immunity would come in handy because there's fire absolutely everywhere on the way down to the ground floor and without that I think this mission would be almost impossible to complete for me. It's timed, there's fire everywhere and there's enemies in every single room. After escaping the building and chasing Tenpenny around the map, he eventually crashes off a bridge and dies as a result. Then the end of the line trophy unlocked and the game was finally completed after 98 missions and this is the longest GTA game I have ever played. All that's left to do now is clean 
clean up a bunch of miscellaneous trophies and a few more things for the 100%. The first thing I did was channel my inner Kobe and scored 30 points in the basketball minigame. The timing took some getting used to but once I had it all figured out it was really easy to do. Next up was completing 50 taxi fears for a trophy and then I maxed out all the weapon skills for another trophy. Then I went and did the three vehicle lists for another trophy and this was more annoying than Vice City because you have to control a crane to export the vehicles instead of just driving them into a garage which increased the time it took to complete. Now all that's left to do for the 100% completion is to complete level 12 of the vigilante missions. To make this as easy as possible I stole a tank from the military base and I eventually reached a 6 star wanted level while doing the missions for another trophy. Soon after that I completed level 12 and I unlocked the what the city needs and the remastered trophies. It's the final stretch for the platinum trophy now and all that's left is 8 miscellaneous trophies. The first one I got was for reaching maximum sex appeal and to get this I had to buy all the tattoos, get a haircut and drive a fancy car. Then I had to go on a date with every potential girlfriend in the game. Straight after that I headed to the club to perform a perfect dance routine for the Smooth Moves trophy. Then I won a race at Inside Track Betting, won at least $1000 in one spin of Wheel of Fortune and I put the maximum bet on red or black and won. After that I had to reach maximum weight and to do this I needed to eat 8 large meals a day for about 3 days. Now all that's left to do is to start a new game after getting 100% on a save file for the iconic trophy, here we go again. And finally, the I Ain't No Buster Platinum Trophy. After about 45 hours I'd finally achieved the Platinum Trophy and now have two of the five Platinums for the GTA series. This was an incredible game and it's the one I enjoyed the most so far. Next up is GTA 3. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. Click the video on screen now to see me get the Vice City Platinum and stay tuned for the next one.